Jewel Smith. Um, I moved to the to Sand Creek when I was in seventh grade. Although we moved, lived in the area before that, but um, my dad died, and so we moved from the farm and moved up to Sand Creek. Where was your farm? Down by Colfax. He was 51 years old when he died from cancer. My mother was left with seven kids, the oldest one in the service. So. So Hannah. I'm Hannah Hovland Greenhill, and I am Herman and Kasparov's daughter. They lived on a farm north of Sand Creek, three miles north of Sand Creek on an 80-acre farm, and um, my grandparents were longtime settlers in Sand Creek and very Norwegian background. My parents were born in the United States, but they spoke Norwegian at home all the time. I answered in English. My brother Carl answered in Norwegian, so of course he's much more fluent in Norwegian to this day than what I am, yet I understand. But Norwegian was very much used in, our, in my household, and it was in a farm life and a rich life. Okay. Uh, I'm Galen Greenhill. I, uh, my parents were Harold and Evelyn Greenhill. We moved to the Sand Creek area in 1941, uh, and time for me to, well, I don't know if it was based on that in time for me to start first grade, but at least it worked out that way. And uh, so I'm a more recent uh, immigrant to Sand Creek. Had uh, the, uh, uh, I had uh, two sisters and a brother. Uh, the, my brother died uh, just after Thanksgiving last year. Harlan. I'm Harlan Theodore Anderson, mm -hmm. son of Helen Caspera Hansen Anderson and John H. Anderson. We, uh, I think I've lived in the San Creek area longer than any of the other participants here. I lived there for 77 years. Uh, lost my train of thought. Get old, that happens, you know. It's fine. <laughs> How about, where did you grow up? Where was it? Grew up on a farm. And where was that farm? Section 15. West of Sand Creek. Yeah, and I just mentioned the lawn on the way up. We've had, with the two grandkids now, six generations of Andersons that lived on that farm. So. Fantastic. So, all of you went to school together. Tell us a little about what school was like in Sand Creek, Wisconsin. Really, I am uh, it was school choice for me. We hear about school choice now, but when I started first grade, I went to Sand Creek State Graded School. I was supposed to go to County Line School but my parents thought that was too far for me to walk. Now, Carl had done it all eight grades, but uh, so I included, uh, I went to boarding school because I stayed with my grandparents. And my dad would take me down to Sand Creek to go to school, and I'd go for the week. Now, we lived only three miles away from town, but no way of transporting me to school every day and picking me up. So I stayed with my grandparents, and they too spoke Norwegian, but I do recall my grandmother listened to me read. I was in first grade, and she listened to me read. And it was nice having Yvonne, my cousin, right next door to uh, Grandpa and Grandma. So I did a lot of things with her. And um, then uh, at the end of first grade, uh, County Line School closed. So then I stayed in Sand Creek, went to school. I didn't stay there. Lyle Nelson had a car and he took some of us and picked us up and uh, that's how we went to school. So he was like your school bus. That's a little car. It's a, a car. car. School <laughs> it's bus. It's a car. Galen walked to school. <laughs> yes. I indelibly uh, impressed in my mind that our farm was located two miles from Sand Creek. Did you ever think if they'd uh, 
went around the corner and come in the other driveway? It would have been I, two miles. <laughs> I thought of that, but uh, no one was impressed with that. <laughs> and so you I walked. Mean, yes, and uh, uh, I don't remember what year. It was after my uh, my time, at least, uh, that uh, it changed for sort of people. I know so by, you walked all eight grades yeah. to school. But and someone would pick some once in a while. Someone would come oh yes, so I would pick you up. Oh, there were people were nice about that, and uh, except the bus driver. Yeah. <laughs> I can remember one cold and blowy day when on the way home it couldn't hardly see a eighth of a mile, and you were kind of. <laughs> wondering if they could give you a ride up to the next intersection and their response was no we don't have insurance to cover you you yeah. gotta walk <laughs> well it all turned out okay and uh, but there were other people that stopped and uh, Hannah's uncle Fritchiff when he stopped he would always give us a piece of candy oh, to yeah. and he took all the way home to it no, we got <laughs> off on, I got off on the quarter of I, you know, that's okay. another mile. <laughs> he gave you a ride part way, that was yeah, enough. That's right. Get a chance to warm up a little. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, during recess time, we'd always go out and wrestle with the uh, Davises and Gardeners to <laughs> get the pecking order in, in school. Or, Yes, there was a pecking order. <laughs> One of the things, though, I, I, I found that uh, in general it was a very friendly community, but there were people that were on the, the lower end of the pecking order, too. The, the, the uh, gardeners and Davises still hate us. <laughs> they may have, may have some <laughs> reason to do so. <laughs> So what did you do during recess besides have the pecking order of? Well, you may be giving too much of an emphasis <laughs> to that. We uh, we had uh, various kinds of games and uh, we had various... Pull, pull, pull away! <laughs> yeah. Fox and geese! Uh, when there was snow on the ground, yeah. Well, those and then we played softball. Softball and kickball. Gail and, kick. was, Gail and kick, kick the ball further than anybody. I, and I was pretty fast to <laughs> run, run and, and so on. But that, uh, one of uh, the uh, experiences that I had that I really got chewed out. Uh, I know, under the power plant. You know, there was that power substation oh. <laughs> right there. And the ball went into there. And then I was thin. <laughs> snuck so, under the fence. So, so I snuck under the fence, but so badly timed that a man from the power company just came by and really told me <laughs> no. that was a no-no. Yeah, I think he told you how many times you'd have been fried if you just stood up. Yeah. He, he, he re I don't remember ex the ex exact words about it, but I got the message. <laughs> and I do recall being chosen last for most games, any kind of base, well, softball. And you remember that. <laughs> That's what I do remember. <laughs> That's it. Well, I wasn't too high on the uh, other than kickball. Well, the softball, if you could hit it back to the fence, you know, that looked like Ooh. forever. Now it's not very far when you see <laughs> how short that, that fence is. Oh. I don't think Kenna was the absolute last person chosen. I. I don't think we'll name, uh, they're not here, but, <laughs> they, but it, of women that uh, were l less first choice. Oh, oh. I no. mean, they they were first choice, but they weren't in for softball. Athletics. Can athletics. you remember all the teachers we had? No. No, I can't either. Oh, but I remember Who? it being Dora Harrington coming yeah. to. Yeah, but she wasn't she first. Teacher. No, she wasn't. We she should was in the upper room. Oh, no, she was. It's I think she was. Third, I think we had her two years, but she, oh, okay. there was a piano in the room, and she played the piano, and we had so much fun singing, and I was I loved that, but that was the highlight. Mrs. That. Farner. Oh, oh Mrs. Yes. Farner, and she seventh, she was later grade yeah. seventh, seventh and eighth. eighth. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And she lived at Hilda Wentlands. Her home was uh, was Colfax, and she came and stayed all week. 
in the sanctuary could heal yep. the wetlands. John would bring her up and take, come and get her on Friday. Yes. Yeah. And but she was a little bit on the plumpy side, and when she sat down, her dress would ride up <laughs> her thighs. And we always wondered how far it would go. No <laughs> monkey business with her. <laughs> All the way to China. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. But she was a good teacher. She oh, was a good yeah, teacher. I, I liked uh, mm -hmm. the, her and... Uh, uh, Hilda Wentland filled in some, yeah. but she also Lorraine cooked. Knutson she cooked. filled she in some. Lorraine Knutson. Yeah. Lorraine Knutson. Yeah. And That's then we good. had uh, Gilbert's. Uh, uh, Mrs. Stanley Gilbert. Mrs. Stanley oh, Gilbert. That's for a right. While. And then Hazel. Uh, um, oh, she married. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. She was uh, Hazel from Dover. She oh, married okay. Harleston. Harleston. She Hazel Harleston, oh. and she married uh, Evers, Donald Evers, Evers oh, okay. from Colfax. Yeah, she but was. She was there one year. Yeah. She was very young. I think that was. <laughs> I think it was her first, first job. job. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. She mm -hmm. had some problems. Mm -hmm. Now, where did uh, Mrs. Lloyd Gustum fit in? She, she was yeah, third but, or but, fourth. But she was. She was in the lower in the smaller room. The yeah. Smaller range. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now these two rooms are the same size, but we also yeah. the first one. Well, big and the little because the kids were littler than we were. I guess. Big room and the little room. <laughs> What about Christmas programs or school mm -hmm. programs? You open the door between, yeah. uh, or the double doors. Set up the stage and... Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a big... And the, there was a fall thing. Well, we had a there? Yeah, fall social and then uh -huh. a Christmas program. Christmas. Oh. Yeah, they raised some money pieces. off from yeah. the fall social. For, for pay for that Christmas. Yeah, okay. We could pay for, pay for <laughs> our orange and apple and okay. maybe a candy cane. That we there had. was... And Arnold Gilberts was the Santa Claus. Yeah. I remember him. Everybody coming. knew he was Santa, or he was, who was but the Santa Claus. I was very fearful of Santa, oh, and I would my, sit my on my mother's lap. Was there once, and she crawled under the chair when he came in. Yeah, I was. I was scared of of Santa Claus. They used to have this horse. I don't know whatever happened to it, but two people get in that. Well, oh, yeah. Roger Deach and I did that one year, you know, and the Santa Claus lead us up on the stage and had that big wooden. Thing. Oh, some Roger kids. didn't have a gas problem. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and some of the kids were just petrified. <laughs> I don't blame them. Up, <laughs> up on the stage. <laughs> oh. Well, there, there were fun things about those things, but the the uh, not so fun thing that I always remember didn't happen to me, but uh, the you know the women would. Uh, Make a basket in the ox oh, okay. oh, and bid on it. Uh -huh. I, I didn't basket hear, but uh, somebody did. And then, of course, they're supposed to eat with that per Ooh, yeah. person. And uh, this uh, individual that prominent them. person that uh, found them. out that uh, whose it was. They and, weren't from and, up in Sukrik, there's some place where they. The, or was it one of the? No, it was. Yeah. It was further out on M. On M. Okay. And uh, the and I, uh, that uh, stuck in my mind about that. What mm -hmm. a, uh, a sad thing it uh, mm -hmm. it was. It was uh, mm -hmm. that uh, person mm -hmm. trying to do something, contribute, uh, and then to be shunned in that that way. So that. Mm -hmm. No, when nobody would bid on your basket, you yeah. know you were in trouble. Yeah. yeah. They had a cast iron wood stove when they started, and Mrs. Frank Prusik's oh, mother that's, cooked. That's right. And uh, she was of uh, Eastern European heritage, and we had some interesting uh, dietary changes. It wasn't all white either. So goulash, goulash. Yes, it was yeah, goulash. But they were probably on the best eating it, list in Prague. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and they probably did us a lot of good too because yeah. it certainly warmed us up at noon. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Nice. So she was a nice lady. And then uh, uh, Mrs. Otto Madison did some cooking. She did it for years oh, oh, and years. Oh. My mother and her did that, and she, oh, your mother was my mother it? was a yeah. sister, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, well, Mrs. Madison, I, something to do with the turkey. I don't know if she left it out or what to thaw it out. 
and got most of the kids sick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so it was thawed. Yeah. Martha. Martha. Yeah. That's right. Was that when we were? No, it was after we were out of oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was after we were out of there. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> our director <laughs> has an experience. <laughs> <laughs> were you one that got sick? So, what were some memorable lunches that besides goulash? Oh, I remember they had fig sauce, and I hated got fig <laughs> sauce. I don't know what. And the <laughs> surplus cheese we got was usually inedible. Yeah. And we were supposed to eat everything. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't like that fig sauce. I, to this day, I don't eat fig. <laughs> so I can't remember what I ate the uh, day before. <laughs> Not to think of 50 years. <laughs> Plus. <laughs> I think there was a certain sameness to the diet. Nothing of which would stick to, with you for very long. <laughs> Not even to the ribs? <laughs> um, so, anything else about school that was memorable? Getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a little library. It was in orange, orange crates, wasn't it? Orange? That's in the small room. <laughs> they had bigger stuff in there. <laughs> Big room. Oh. We didn't have many books. But there were a few. Two of you talked about how you got to school. Harlan, how did you get to school? My dad took the milk over. And he, we would ride with him and ride on the bus back again. And if it was a pleasant day, we'd get off at the junction of U and V and walk the rest of the way home instead of riding with the Davises and Gardeners for mm -hmm. the next 23 miles or it seemed like it. Outside of school, what was there to do in Sand Creek? What Ice skating on the mill pond in winter time. Until oh. Pastor oh, Almquist fell. fell over and got a concussion. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Mm. Yeah. Well, we used to skate on the creek too. Oh, where well, was the mill pond? Where the mill was. <laughs> where was the mill? <laughs> well, you know where the big white house is there west of town? Um, I do, but. That was where the mill pond was. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, I don't know where that. Yeah, yeah it, it, was the, it was the feed was mill the uh, at the little. Uh, yeah, yeah be on, on Pine Creek, and, and originally the mill was run by water power. Yeah, there was a, a dam in there, so I can remember it using water power there. Yeah. And it, and it had a nice fishing hole for... Uh, right below the dam. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, as a kid, I, uh, when they, my father would take uh, grit, uh, the, down there and I, I'd uh, do uh, some fishing uh, uh, when the, it was being ground. What kind of fish did you catch? It was they're mostly rock bass. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. Father would always take a fishing pole because you always had to wait. And he'd get some productive time there today in a meal home. Now, I remember going to the mill and there were sacks of feed, I guess, and we looked for certain sacks and my mother would sew, oh. sew clothes out of those. Patterns on them. Yeah, yeah, feed they sacks. They come in pillowcase size. Yes. Yeah. Flour did and then there was a seam in there you had to pull out, you know, and then it would. But my mother sewed nearly all my clothes. I didn't have any, even mm -hmm. coats. This goes would, back to the war yeah, years when yeah. Yeah. she would rip apart yeah. coats and uh, top coats and so on and, and sew coats for me and well all my clothes I would, and I would get I would get a nice store bought out dress every Christmas from Marshall Fields or Carson Perry Scott in Chicago. My aunt Ona sent me a beautiful dress and it was a highlight at uh, Christmas and then at Easter she would send us. Um, uh, candy, Snyder's candies from Chicago, and they were that, that was, was special. Cadbury egg. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, no, it would be. But it was Mrs. Snyder's candies, and we loved getting those chocolates. That was, and then if anything was wrapped in, uh, in if it was packed in newspaper, my mother always straightened out those newspapers, and we would read those mm. Chicago papers. So maybe that's where I get that newspaper reading that I do all the time. But it was very important to uh, get those newspapers from Chicago and, of course, then the box, the dress. 
was really Jill, a highlight. Oh, we used to slide on Nelson's Hill, too. Where's oh. Nelson's Hill? Right on behind farm, Kenny's house. On the farm there. Like, <laughs> we were one time, Wayne Owens was riding on top of me on the sled, and I, you know, you'd come down the hill and in turn go down the lane. You caught the wire? Well, I told Wayne, I said, if I holler, roll off. You roll off. Well, and I hollered that. He squeezed down tighter, and we went through the fence. <laughs> I had the wire cut from here right through my ear and down to here. Mm. Went home, and my mother washed it up with Lysol, and that Put was a little it. iodine on it, and you're in business, huh? Didn't go to the emergency. <laughs> Tough guy. That's it. <laughs> no, it's just the fact of life. Yeah, we didn't go to the doctor. No. no. That's it. Mm. The doctor could come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No. Didn't have that. But. Um. So, other entertainment. We had ice skating on the mill pond. Roller skating at Stanley's there later. Oh. Where was Stanley's? Corner 64 and whatever that West is, River the old Road. Good Luck Garage. West River Road. And the old okay. Good Luck Garage. Oh, that's right. Uh, Arnold Gilbert's built that, didn't he? They built the garage, yeah. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Hans Peterson's, they lived there. and Stanley Gilbert's Stanley lived there. Stanley lived there, Stanley, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Hans traded places, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Of course, another social event was uh, at least at, uh, not of the same uh, variety, uh, but uh, on Sunday evenings, uh, young people oh, yeah. or, or oh. Luther Lee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, that was a, not, not that you did anything, but it was an opportunity of young people to get to know other young people yeah. and, and uh, talk. So that was. Here. After the formal program was over and you had your lunch and the adults went home, you could sit there and talk for hours yeah. on yeah. world affairs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Or girls. No, the girls <laughs> participated. <laughs> Didn't talk much about the girls there. <laughs> so what else about church activities? Because that probably was a central focus. And certainly, uh, church was a central focus in uh, in Sand Creek, particularly I think in Zion. Uh, I don't, you know, I shouldn't say it that way because I don't know. Uh, we we thought that the Our Saviors uh, people, they were a little bit uppity. Yeah. Uppity? You oh, know. we viewed the Sand Creek ones. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was too liberal. Yeah. Perhaps our saviors was yes. too liberal. I don't think there were any liberals in San <laughs> <laughs> at that time. That was what, what Juno. <laughs> oh yes, Juno and I had long <laughs> conversations. Uh, sometimes till one thirty in the morning oh, okay. uh, after, uh, the, and uh, and of course in those days that's kind of bleeding back to school days. As a youngster, I was I was interested in politics, uh, and uh, you were, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, one thing I frequently did do was to write letters to the editor uh, on issues. Uh, and my mother clipped those letters out that Galen wrote. How about you? Know he wrote a lot. Too. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Yeah. In the uh, towards the end of his life, our politics diverged, <laughs> yes. but uh, the uh, uh, we had very very good uh, uh, conversations. And uh, do you uh, remember one of those topics that you wrote about? Oh yes, I wrote about uh, McCarthy. <laughs> yes. Oh yes, I I, I was. Uh, Probably one of the few members of the Joe Must Go Club, oh. you know, when, uh, in, in, uh, to uh, recall Senator McCarthy, that uh, uh, Al Gore from uh, Black, Black River Falls started it, and uh, 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 let's see, that would have been 52. Yeah. Audrey Dahl, which was a mile out of Sand Creek, I mean out of the town of Sand Creek, 
used to say that her dad would ever see whenever he saw a picture of Joe McCarthy, he'd poke his eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> It was liberal too. You know. Well, yeah, I think I think that uh, I didn't really know the dolls, but no. uh, but uh, but uh, my understanding was that they were uh, they were some of your closest neighbors. Yeah. They were just on the other side of the river. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you, we can't swim, so. <laughs> And the river was the Great Divide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any of you remember William T. Evu, the oh, Capital yeah. Times? Yeah. He had a radio program. Yeah. Yes. Sunday. And On Sunday. I I was not a real strong fan of Reverend Omquist, and one uh, one time that and uh, that Reverend Omquist served. At Zion, Zion Luther. Zion. And uh, one time as we were going out of church, I said, your sermon was too long, I'm going to miss William T. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, didn't go over at all. I remember that. <laughs> you tell him about that. I wasn't there, but I remember you telling him about that. <laughs> but there's, there's, there are some real, the, the uh, uh, children are fine. The, mm -hmm. Uh, two of you were members at Our Saviors. What do you remember about Our Saviors? That's cool. <laughs> so Zion had Almquist, Our we Saviors had Bestool. Had Bestool. Oh, yeah, yes. Well, what about Bestool? Well, he was one of those guys that one day he knew you and he'd stand and talk, and the next time he'd turn his head up and walk right by you, didn't know you. He had a marvelous wife. Oh, yeah. How she, she put up with him, I never know. <laughs> I remember, well, I've told this story many times, but <clears throat> at, my sister Jeanette turned Catholic, you know, and he come and ranted and raved at our house, you know, and I think she would, would not have turned Catholic if, if he'd have left her alone. But when we were confirmed, you know, he's up in the pulpit and all the conferments are down here and he looks right down at me and he says, it's not only today that we confess, Jewel, you know. And of course, Jeanette is there too, my sister. Uh, <laughs> in another incident, <clears throat> Hoopy John was playing at the Pines and on a Sunday night and there was youth fellowship or whatever we called it at the time. But I took a whole load of kids to the Pines to, the, to Whoopi John. <laughs> well, the next Sunday in the sermon, he says, I can't compete with Whoopi John, I get. <laughs> I can, being janitor in the church, I can remember Tom Gunderson's funeral. Tom Gunderson liked the liquor a little bit more than he should have. And, that still consigned him to hell several different ways, you know, during the funeral service and had a few of the ladies crying more than, and it wasn't because of the sadness of the departed dead. He, he left some indelible memories with oh, us. Oh, he did at my grandma's funeral. He was, Uncle Harold, you know, the, the boys weren't confirmed. And so he brings that out in Grandma's funeral, how she was concerned that they had never, you know, boy, lots of people didn't like that either. But, but it didn't bother him a bit. <laughs> they missed a few courses in seminary. <laughs> <laughs> the forgiveness courses. Yeah. <laughs> talk about love. love. Mm. Um, what's the youth group, or Luther League, or youth fellowship, whatever you called it? Did you have any activities that were memorable? Lunch. Lunch. Mm -hmm. I remember a couple of plays that that uh, Ella Gilberts wrote. That we, Muskegon Boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was in that, and then Scott, my son, was in it, you know, a okay. lot of years later. Yeah, we put it on at Sand Creek, and we put it on in Chittack and Colfax. And, <clears throat> My thespian activities didn't extend to the Luther League plays. But. <laughs> I really, I really we didn't involved. have anything that fancy. No, yeah. and, and I was I, involved in that because it meant driving in at night, and my dad didn't take me. Of course, 
you really like those spam sandwiches and the with cheese with some little crinkled <laughs> potato chips, huh? <laughs> And, some and, all the face. Olives. and sometimes put that little olive in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an eye looking up at you. And <laughs> that and a, some jiggly jello to go with it. Oh, yes. Bean jello with shaved carrots. In it. <laughs> and of course, there was one thing, uh, one time uh, it was going on quite long, and then I think uh, Miss uh, Cora Peterson was downstairs and Wondering where uh, Mrs. Sophus Snore oh, and Clara uh, was because they were serving. Oh, and then it was a, uh, they came up and tapped her on the shoulder. And, You're serving. Oh, and then it was to get Norman Anderson to open up the farmer's <laughs> store <laughs> and quickly get the lunch together. <laughs> but uh, my Auntie Clara forgot. Yeah. Farmer store. Tell us about the farmer store. Well, I got to get one in here on oh, Michelson. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh. He's a pastor and our saviors who came after Bestel. And his fame was saying after a, a Luther League meeting was, now we'll go downstairs and the ladies can take care of our physical needs. <laughs> <laughs> I was young enough to have an inkling of <laughs> what physical needs meant, but he apparently didn't. <laughs> what class did you learn that? <laughs> Riding the school bus. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> okay, well, now your question. Oh, well, let's go back to riding the school bus. What was it like to ride the school bus? They now, took plenty of shovels along in the wintertime because they didn't close up for snow days. And there was many a time we'd all get out and shovel the bus out. Now, you went to Chatech. Kovax, Kovax, Kovax. No, I no, went to Chatech. I went to Chatech for went two to, years. Oh, okay. Two, two years. years. And then, uh, we, well, then we sold, well, no, we sold the farm. Well, the, in 52, I, my parents sold the farm to Laverne and Elaine Tyson. Okay. And then we moved to uh, San Antonio, Texas. So I graduated from Breckenridge High School in San Antonio. It's, uh, How Biden. big a school was that? I, big. big. I think there were, what, 600 in our graduating class. Okay. It was a big school and I loved it. And, uh, but then uh, we, had the, we had a Dairy Queen hamburger stand in San Antonio. My dad read an ad in this, we had moved down. We, Filled our Studebaker, a new Studebaker car, and filled what we could in that. And my mother took a suitcase of pictures, and I have that suitcase yet on top of an entertainment center in our bedroom. And she had pictures along, as she was not real happy about going to San Antonio. Why did you move to Texas? Well, my brother was working at the um, in Carrizo Springs, and he had gotten his master's. In, at Madison and he was working down there and my father thought with this arthritis Texas being a warm climate would be very good so we went down there and uh, then we rented a house uh, in Uvalde and my dad read the San Antonio paper one Sunday and he saw an ad for a Dairy Queen and hamburger stand on New Braunfels Avenue for sale so we went up there to San Antonio and bought this and this was completely new but my dad was adventuresome and we were very successful and enjoyed that and my dad thought I should take over the Dairy Queen <laughs> because my mother was very un she missed her family and she missed Eau Claire well Wisconsin so then my dad said we'll move back and uh, I came to and we lived, bought a house in Eau Claire and lived there. So then I went to UW Eau Claire. But um, San Antonio was a new life for us and big school. It was exciting. I loved it. So None of those decisions. He just had this 80 acre farm and to supplement things, he would come in and he'd come in with a new corn picker or a combine 
And she, you know, this was my mom's, you know, oh, here I have it. And she, it was a surprise. She didn't know about this. So, but he was the domineering person. And uh, I guess that was the way life was. We would hire him to pick corn over to our place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes he'd have Odin drive. So Odin got in on Odin, Fred Buckshot, Anderson? Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. one. <laughs> Never heard the Fred Buckshot. But... <laughs> that's it. Odin, Fred Buckshot, Anderson. Now, yeah. Who is this person? <laughs> He was a local handyman. Well, he lived yeah. with Sparbies. Yeah, most of the time, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he was uh, <laughs> and he, a handyman, and uh, he'd come and visit. That's right, and I remember he had some kind of, he'd sit with a, he'd light a match, and he'd put that in his mouth. I was so enamored that this could, that he could have this in his mouth. I'm sure it wasn't lit as what I thought it was, but oh, this, I was taken with that. He didn't this, offer you a this two match. a snooze. He always did me. <laughs> he always. Oh, well. He used to work with Harvey Hendricks and thrashing mm -hmm. too. Sit yeah. on the tractor, but that's about all he, he did. But he mm -hmm. sit on the tractor. And people would get him to paint the oh, room, yeah. and, oh, yeah. and and it was yeah. truly a handyman. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. and he liked to visit, come and have coffee, coffee. and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Garfield Nesson, he worked well together. Yeah. <laughs> Argue the whole day long. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about all of these? You talk about combining, and what about things like threshing and the farm things that you had to do? You should you should yeah. tell about one of your favorite things. I see. I was outside with my dad. I like to be out in the field, and and I would ride along with him on the tractor, and then I got probably not as old as I should have been, but I was driving tractor. I liked that. And then... What kind dad, of tractor? What, a Ford tractor oh, first. Okay. I liked that little one. And then we I had a Minneapolis Moline, which I didn't like quite as well. But in the summer, uh, my dad was combining, but Uncle Sophus and Uncle Fritch and Uncle Arnold still threshed. So okay. I would go and I'd drive the tractor in the field, pick up Bundle. bundles. 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 So I thought that was fun. Mm -hmm. And then in the winter, my dad, uh, winter, uh, my dad had a s little sawmill, and he would have me go around squirting oil in different parts. So they used to call me Oiler Hovlin. <laughs> I would go squirting around. You, you mentioned thrashing. <laughs> There was a hierarchy in the female end of it too, as to who was the best Good provider. Yeah. Look. Yes. And uh, until Malcolm got his combine, we always look forward to eating at the Loftus yeah. homestead oh. there. Jeanette was a tremendous cook. Oh, Otto Millsteads, you know, you'd get fried chicken and then he'd come with a bowl of ice cream, so big you couldn't eat it, you know. You want some more? Yeah. <laughs> We used to ask my dad when uh, corn picking when he'd come home at night. Now, what did you eat today? Yeah. And then our treat was at the end of the season we would uh, take my mother and I down to Bloomer. I think it was Hovland's Cafe on Main Street there, and we'd have Sunday dinner down there because we didn't go out to eat very much. You remember what it cost? No, I don't. But I'm sure it wasn't very much. I bet you. What about your favorite uh, uh, time of corn picking in your? Oh. This was so dumb. My dad, on Saturday, uh, when I was at school, he would have me sit in the uh, the wagon and with a husker and my like, and husker all. and all these cobs would be flying off. <laughs> you couldn't pull your feet out of it. <laughs> oh, it was awful. And then I'd get so cold out there, and then I'd get in the house and I'd sit by the furnace with that where that heater was. Oh, but that was not a pleasant thing. But that was Saturday on the farm in the fall. Mm. Well, the process... It's called shocking, shocking. You know, yes. the right word. Yeah. Mm. I know. It's really fun, especially if there was thistles in there. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Just wouldn't want a short sleeve <laughs> shirt. 102 degrees in the shade and you were sweating like a butcher. Oh. And all that chaff would get oh. under your shirt. And, yeah, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> 
But then I remember with the combine, the, uh, Leonard Tyson and I would, uh, he was so kind to me, and he'd let me run around with him, and we'd drive, I suppose with a tractor, and pick up that, the sacks of yeah. grain. Yeah, that, and in those days, the, the, yeah. uh, the oats was in a sack. Yeah. And, and, you all know, carried them upstairs so you could dump no, them? No, I didn't, but yeah. I was along. Le Le Leonard let me go along with him. He's a very nice man. Very kind to me. I remember helping Arnold and Sophus and Fritch of Thrash. That was quite the a circus. Arguments, the arguments. Yes. <laughs> the arguments. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you had involved in some interesting conversation. <laughs> and, uh... Such as. So, well, I, I don't dare tell you what the name was that they had for him, but I, I was hauling bundles up at Fritch's. And he had a, I don't I think it was a 16-foot rack. It was longer than most of them, anyway. And I'd haul bundles with these horses and get out in the field, and I got, you know, a pretty good load on, and I was going to cross the dead. You were drinking, too? You no. Know, <laughs> I, I when to ease them through that dead furrow. Well, I got front wheels through, got the back wheels in there, and pulled the reach out of the wagon. <laughs> Good horses. Yeah, old Fritch, uh, you know, he kind of knew that was going to happen, you know. I don't know, he probably didn't even have put together very good, but. <laughs> I know he had to hire to help. I would go up there and cook you know, and do it. I don't know if I cooked for you or not. <laughs> I don't <laughs> remember that. <laughs> He'd have me come up and hook, cook. And what would you cook? Pretty plain stuff. <laughs> I Oil, mean, meat potatoes, potatoes. And meat, potatoes, yes, and corn or and peas or whatever. It was plain food. That's it. But they, in, in thrashing, they I, sometimes I think they planned the schedule. Oh, so it, you they, end up at at so and so's yeah. place. From, you work like. <laughs> to uh, get uh, <laughs> through, and then so you could move over there because it'd be a bit better, better meal. Yeah. Better meal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fritz, if he married our old English teacher, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Lily. Yeah. Lily. Yeah. Lily. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a real romance. <laughs> yeah. Well, wasn't his first wife or sister or something? No. 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 Mother no. liked to tell the story at the thrashing where. One of our local notables was a young feller then, and, and I think his name was Clifford Nelson. Oh. And they passed the horseradish dish around, and he thought it was salsa or something. Mm -hmm. I, or coleslaw, maybe. Anyway, he took a big spoonful <laughs> and spit it clear across the table. Not <laughs> <laughs> did like it. Janice, my first wife, used to tell about <clears throat> somebody when they're thrashing down there, and this guy, the gravy, come around, and he looks around, and he says, "Am I the only one that gets soup?" He was eating soup. soup. <laughs> <laughs> New experiences. Must have not have been the thickest gravy in the world. <laughs> we were very sophisticated. <laughs> Oh yeah, we had a little excitement for a few years over on the west side of the river too there. There were other people that took uh, milk to town and there was one particular fellow with name of Deech, I don't know if anybody heard of him, who we would listen when he left Sand Creek. You could hear him go around every corner. He was trying to set a new record from the creamery to his milk house. And I grin every morning when I hear those tires squeal, and <laughs> you got it naturally. Yeah, um, that would be Grandpa Herman, or would that be Dad? They're both. Your Dad. Dad. <laughs> Your Dad. Grandpa did too. And then, when Albert Severson died, uh -huh. there were people who thought he had some money, cousins of his, I believe, who got themselves a. Geiger counter type machine, and they went over every inch of his property there, trying to find his buried stash. 
Didn't find it. He mentioned that to Norris. Oh, Norris says, you've got a cheap Geiger counter there. He said, you've got to buy an expensive one if you're going to find money. <laughs> so they spent $900 on one and still didn't find any money. <laughs> as long as we're in the Severson section, I will repeat this story. Uh, Norris was up to Olaf Thwaite. Norris who? Swanson. Swanson. And uh, they have a barn where the cows face towards the middle and there was a narrow walkway where they would set the milk can and strain the milk. And the cow got excited when Norris walked in and she arched her back and urinated right into the strainer. Oh, Albert, or Albert Lowell says, I think we'll have to strain that one again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to tell about your, your experience in the, in no, the barn? No. Carl wrote about my experience in the barn. <laughs> well, tell us about it. Well, I came out with a new dress, and I was showing it off to my dad. And, oh, there was a cow that kind of lifted its tail and it wasn't so good and I cried. <laughs> what did you do to the cow? Ran to the house. <laughs> I just got out of there. <laughs> well, it's a special it. dress you were wearing. That's right. That's right it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I think about I think about the Myrans a lot growing up. They were very special people and I rode my bike down to uh, when I got a bike it was quite old before I got a bike because I had to save money and uh, I was probably you know sixth grade or so and so then I would ride my bike down to the corner to Benny and he would talk with me and I just couldn't believe how he didn't send this kid away but he was very generous with his time and if I go up to the house then uh, Annie and um, Bessie, Bessie, yeah, they always, they would have bakery items from Cobb's Bakery. Cobb's Bakery in Chautauk had a panel, and they drove around the countryside, and people would buy. Now we never bought from them because I guess my dad thought that was too expensive. My mother had to bake, but um, they always had good. They had long johns and that kind of thing. So I would go there and get a little treat. But they were very nice, very kind. And then, of course, Benny Park. Uh, it's, I think, by the Benny Park. With the uh, uh, ferry to go over to that island. It was really neat. What was there on that island? I don't think there was anything over there other than oh, yes, trees. There was. there was a stove. There was a wood cook stove. Hmm. It must there have been a pavilion or something. Yes. Oh. Bowling <laughs> 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 The but that was kind I of an ex extra special uh, uh, time that the youth groups yeah. would go yeah, over I there for... Uh, don't recall. Uh, Take the ferry over. Yeah. yeah. That was early days when I was going. And then, of course, I remember going down to the Red Cedar River. And after we had been out working in the field, because we didn't have a bathroom, and my dad would say, well, we'll go down and Take wash off. Take a bar off. of soap with you. <laughs> wash off. And that was it. And then the Jensen girls would come up and stay at the Myron. They come from Colfax, and they would stay at the Myrons uh, some of the summers. And they would, we'd meet down at the uh, river. And what was the relationship between the Myrons and the Jensens? Um, and uh, a sister. <laughs> and, yeah. Yes. And mm -hmm. then these girls were, yeah, they were, they were nieces. nieces. But they were, they were very nice to me, and they included me. You kind of looked up the river to see where the cows were. <laughs> yes, my mother never liked that. If she saw the cows, you know, up going across also the river. Also taking their bath. Yeah, yeah, going up the river, up across the river. And, uh, she was not fond of that. I don't think my mother was really a farm lady. She, uh, it's too bad that she didn't get an education. She had all these relative uncles who were pharmacists and medical doctors, but she was a girl. So she never did get on to school. I think she would have done well as a journalist. She wrote fantastic letters. And um, we, uh, when I was away, even when I traveled to Europe, uh, she would write letters to me over there. As I 
they have different hotels that I would give the address for, and she would write letters. And uh, it was she was a, a writer, and she was not a farm lady. And I think too too bad she could never drive. But I'm sure my dad thought that was just as well that you know keep her on the farm. But uh, it was so, and she had a good life when she came to Eau Claire. I think that was very nice. My parents both enjoyed their retirement in Eau Claire, and it was a long retirement. That was very. Good. And your mother wrote to you and Carl every week for till, yes. you know, I don't know up yes. till a ni she in was her about 90s. ninety. In her 90s. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so it was always a letter. We didn't use the telephone, of course, because that cost something. So we didn't. Use I. That. I, because they're, they're dead, I can tell this story. I was I, I was talking to Caspera uh, and joke with her, and I, I'd get her going. And and uh, one time at, up at the nursing home, she was uh, she was about ninety eight then, and uh, at Nap Haven. She at Nap Haven, and uh, I don't remember exactly how it got started, but uh, I said, well, you know. Carl was so much older than, than Hannah. Uh, uh, how does that work? Well, she said, Herman came in one day and said, I think we should go <laughs> get going on the second. Out of family. <laughs> yeah. so I just about fell off the chair. <laughs> this 98-year-old lady in nap even. <laughs> Get this family bigger. Get this family bigger. And of course, they had eloped. They went off to Stillwater, and uh, no, I've, if Gail and I would have done that, I don't think that would have been looked on, especially with a great um, deal of. Uh, but uh, they they went off to uh, Stillwater. But they didn't married. have to get married. No, they didn't. And they, my mother was, <laughs> and my mother was like twenty nine, and. Dad was quite a bit older, but, oh yes. Well, I'll tell one about my Hanson side. Father and mother had gone up to visit him, and Julius had just bought himself a new Buick. So they had to go for a ride, and Julius said, well, Father, now you drive. So they were tooling down the road, and Julius put a fresh chaw in his mouth and chawing away and turned to the right and spit out the window, but the window was shut. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma did not like it. <laughs> I had an experience with uh, tobacco too. Uh, not when the first time I tried it, I mean, it was the time that I was riding with my grandpa, but the window was, he was up in the front seat with my dad and and. and and he spit out. The window was open, but the window was open in the, the back, back too. <laughs> and it came right. <laughs> That's it. Mm. Oh yes. Yeah. But then the cafe was uh, a place. Sometimes we would go to the Sanford Cafe and get some a, a gallon of no, I I wasn't a gallon. It was a small amount of ice cream on a Sunday after church. Usually but that was pork were they. Hand packed it no, and wanted No, no. Well, they it was were Gustafson's half too, but they. Gustafson's ice okay. cream. And, but uh, it was on rare occasions that but we would go there. But you had to eat and it right away because you didn't have a refrigerator, I remember that. <laughs> but then I remember visiting Grandpa and Grandma downtown, Sankrick, and, and I could go. Grandpa would give me a nickel and I could go across to Selmer Severson's store and get an ice cream cone for a nickel. That was pretty special. You'd probably count it twice, too, before <laughs> I... <laughs> but Selmer had it. Yeah. Just Selmer had it. You scoop up. bought ice cream cones the other day in Abbotsford for $2.75 a piece. Was that mm -hmm. the smallest ones they sold, too? <laughs> the smallest <laughs> ones. <laughs> yes. Inflation, it's called, Joe. Well, so um, you mentioned the cafe. Um, talk about the businesses of Sandrick and maybe start with the cafe. The businesses of Sand Creek. Well, the farmer's store. Farmer's store, that was one of the originals in the farmer's store system, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they started the creamery, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, give us some details. What was the farmer's store like? 
Well, you could walk up the west side there and you get behind the candy counter and there was always enough spills so that you could satisfy your craving for sugar. But my dad would go and buy the groceries. My mother never made a grocery list. He would just go and buy and then she had to cook what he brought home. Did he bring a lot of candy home? On occasion, he yes. Did. And then at Christmas, I know we get a bag of oranges. That was pretty. That was nice to get the fruit. But it was. I like the back room there, where you walked over those uneven boards. Yeah. And they, then where they kept the dynamite out in the shed behind. Oh, yeah. uh, well, they had everything. <laughs> yes, they did. it, it they was had a, parts for binders and and uh, sickles for the mowers and horse harness parts and. Yeah, everything, and okay. plus the groceries and the, all, all kinds of uh, shoes. And, and then uh, they, uh, women would line up for get hosiery. Yeah. Let's see, I don't know what, I uh, guess there was... Probably after the war when they... Must have been. Couldn't get it there anymore. But they went down. Was there anything upstairs or downstairs? In those Both. Places? Both. Both. They had, yeah. Three they had that elevator where right you could haul the things up and down, yeah. you know. No, they had... Oh, yeah, they had... <laughs> Very modern building. <laughs> yeah, they only had to do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> so three stories of shop, or is it just storage? Well, just storage. They had a huge inventory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, probably had, one of the things that killed them in the end that they just didn't turn it enough. They had, yeah, they had that yellow warehouse out in the back. They kept a lot of stuff back mm -hmm. there. And who were some of the merchants there? The people that worked there. Oh yeah. boy. Well, Norman Anderson was a manager mm -hmm. at, at one time, Jewel uh, Anderson. Oscar Anderson's son. Jewel Anderson was a manager there. Didn't and, Onaline, and, work, Onaline work there? Yeah, she was the, she worked the dry goods oh. manager or something like and that. And that's where they had a list for gifts. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I, a bridal uh, list, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> bridal registry. Oh. So yeah. a baby list. Yes. Oh, oh baby. A dollar list, was it? And a, a 50 cent, 50. a dollar and... Okay, it was two dollar. I think. Yeah, it was pretty low. Mother had her name on that off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think it was nine times. <laughs> yeah, I know that we got gifts from there when we were married. Okay. Yeah. Oh. The. Uh, oh yeah, they had a lot of things. Uh, one lady was looking uh, at uh, things down uh, in the counter there and. My mother said, uh, said, do you know paint there? Yeah. Which of course is, do you see something nice? And this lady said, there aren't any pants there. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, I remember Lillian Whitman. She, she was cashier. Yeah. Cashier there, yep. Yeah. Oh. Gehring was there too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, before Paul Gehring. Yeah, Paul yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then, what about the cashiering? Oh, that's nothing much happened. That, not in Sand Creek. They yeah. didn't have that. They didn't, not those yeah. no, they wires. Didn't. No. Chittack that, had it. Menominee had it. And Bloomer had it. Yeah, Bloomer. Chittack. Not in Sand Creek. No. I, don't mm -hmm. I don't recall. I think, we went to, I think we went to a center. Yeah, they had section. the yeah. cashier section cashier. in the uh -huh. center. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you only paid one person. Yeah, and only you put, once. You, you put your money in that little lucky trash and pull the string in it. What the? It, was but, that in San Cruz? No, not in San Cruz. No, no. 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 no, but I remember in Bloomer and Eau Claire. We shopped a lot at the Bloomer Pharma store. Yeah. That's, uh, what about, were there any other grocery stores in San Cruz? Two well, of them. Yeah. And they were? Selber store and Snort's well, haberdashery. Or well, it was not Bertha exactly. Warman. It was Bertha Warman. That's yeah. red and white. Red. Red. Yeah, that was red and white. Red and, white. Yeah. and they had a locker, locker plant there, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kept, that was before the advent of home freezers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the blacksmith shop. Oh, yes. That was on the hill there south of where the feed mill used to be. And then, but Ole Engen. Ole Engen, he had a little shop in his... Yeah, that was more woodwork. Yeah. yeah. I guess. But then, uh, but we went there. There were several yeah. different ones that had the blacksmith shop before Bud, you know. Mm -hmm. Ed Lang had it. And 
it was kind of indispensable. There were no welders out in the country, no, so no. they would heat up their forge and but hammer you know, the welds together. My dad had a forge. He did, okay. Because mm -hmm, I used to stand there and okay. the bellows. You were a really handy young lady, weren't <laughs> you? <laughs> I was with my dad. So who sold gas in town at that time? Oh. That was uh, Conrad had it. Homoya? And then yeah, Homoya. Well, yeah. My uncle Oscar. Tell me again. Um, Conrad Gilbert. Uh, but uh, begin, uh, answer the question within the sentence. So, what? sold whoever what? their name was sold the people gas. That sold gas were yeah. Well, Con uh, Conrad Gilbert uh, sold gas at Home Oil, mm -hmm. and uh, well, there were others that did. And earlier, yeah. it was Uncle Art Hovland. Oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Uncle Art Hovland had it. And that, then, that was before Conrad? But I don't think he was in that location of Home Lumber. That, I mean, Home uh, Oil. Oil. Now, then, of course, later, uh, uh, the, uh, I can't, now, uh, Mobile and Rodney. Yeah, Rodney. Rodney. But your uncle, morning. your uncle, uh, 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 Kenneth Nelson's uncle, or Kenny Nelson's uncle. And did did Hanson ever sell well, in down there? Hanson. In, in, yeah, in he might have the, had a in, pump there, but yeah, I don't think he. At, at in earlier, Hanson, that's right. at, uh, we were later uh, Laverne and, and uh, Tofu, oh, yeah. Prusik. Uh, sold tractors and machinery. Yeah, right. Minneapolis Cars. Moline farm machinery. And yeah. Any kind of a car he wanted. He'd find it for you. Yeah. yeah. This was right after the war when there was, used cars were scarce. Mm -hmm. Who was that? Laverne Tyson. Laverne, he, well, brand new ones. He'd, he'd sell you a new car before the dealers had them. <laughs> well, he was a good businessman. Where did the name Muskie come from? Uh, that was Laverne Tyson's mm -hmm. nickname. I don't think he was a fisherman. No. <laughs> but his wife wouldn't tell us. No. She wouldn't. Okay. <laughs> Muskie, I am. I don't know that. I know we got a number of things. A corn planter uh, and a manure spreader. Mm -hmm. Well, there was the egg company, Dairyland Egg. Yeah, Paulson. Oh, Paulson's. Oh, yes. oh, sure. Oh, Where yes. That well, well, that's where the senior center senior is. Senior center, now. yeah. The old, the wood, what was it, Woodman Hall? Or, uh huh. Is that where the skating was, too? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Were there many woodmen in, in Sand Creek if there, you had a Woodman Hall? There were at one time, I guess. Yeah, uh, back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever know anyone up there? My my uncle Oli was a woodman. I, oh, yeah. he had a membership in it. I don't. Know. So it must have been something that was formed early in the century and exclusive, right? Huh? Yeah. Oh, very, very. <laughs> kind of prior insurance and stuff, right? Then. Yeah, they 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 were a kind of fraternity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fraternal. Fraternal. Mm -hmm. When did the feed mill move to San Creek? 1948. 1948, I think, from across the river there. From the from where you said the feed mill on was. Um, yeah. Well, of course, the dam went out, so that's when it, it, it wasn't a pond anymore. Uh, and, uh, and then they put in, you know, a gas engine, yeah. Minneapolis yeah. clean engine, I think. They had. But everything was antiquated, and yeah. it wasn't yeah. adequate yeah. to the job at hand anymore. Old burr mill, I think they had in there or something. Mm -hmm. Pretty slow. Yeah. And of course. That the feed mill was a uh, 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 co-op, yeah. and uh, various people were act. There were a number of people that were active in the co-op movement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was the Ridgeland Co-op that built it in Sand Creek, yeah, and then after a few years, Sand Creek split off from Ridgeland and managed it themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Arnold Gilbert's got it. Arnold Gilbert's, of course, yeah. he was. He was. It's too bad he didn't get into the, the legislature. Yeah. Ar Arnold would have been uh, made for an interesting uh, uh, and interesting in the good sense, not like a when people would say, "Well, that was interesting." I said, "So is a hairless cat," but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it, not in that sense. Uh, the, but he was he was way ahead of his time. Yeah, he, and uh, yeah, and uh, you know, people I talk to him in Amman, he still you know talk about him. Mm -hmm. but, he wasn't one to keep his silence. No, no, no. No, but uh, there aren't many silent people in the legislature. No, <laughs> no they get there by talking. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 
Well, Bill Nelson had the sawmill too that he. Well, yes. Harvey had Harvey it before had one that. Too, and, yeah. Well, they, I think they had them at the same time. They're, Maybe they overlap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hendrickson. Yeah, Harvey yeah. Hendrickson. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, Were there barber shops? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the barber? Lyons. Bill he Lyons. Lyons. Yeah. He got he had, he had a temper. Well, and and he was. Uh, a real popular guy on Halloween. He sure was. <laughs> and he would chase them down the street and the other kids would run in and spray paint his place with ink. I, I just hear, heard about that. I, I would never have been involved in that kind of activity, but he had buggies and stuff on top of the roof and... Uh, and uh, when they got done with at the barber shop, then they'd go over to Clifford's, yeah. Nelson's. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then they they would probably head up to Sophus too yeah. because oh, Sophus he would react North. too. Huh? Yeah, North. and uh, uh, didn't didn't he shoot off a gun <laughs> and and uh, when somebody going through the uh, uh, watermelon patch? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I uh, this is all second hand. For, uh, mm -hmm. Of course, then there was also Julius Johnson's uh, wedding when he got married, you know, and then they had the Shiverium. And uh, uh, they, uh, they were really going at it, because we lived right across there, and they were, we weren't over there, but we were out in the yard looking. And uh, they were pounding on saws and stuff like that, and he, they didn't budge him. Your your uncle was very much involved in that. Really? Yes, he was. Bob or? Oh, let's see. Maybe I've Rob. got. Uh, uh, I'm going Rob? back another generation. Okay. Gerald. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, the uh, and then they figured they could get. Uh, they they well, all drove away, except uh, a couple went up on top of the uh, roof. And they plugged the chimney. He <laughs> smoked them. Oh, man, that's cool. Well, explain this shivery. Well, that that is, I don't. The, the it, it, well, I, ancient tradition. I don't know what its origins are, but you would, somebody would get married. You had to celebrate, yeah. and you did it by raising a real commotion and then they were supposed to provide you with ice cream sandwiches and a little beer once in a while yeah and uh, that's that's a good description of that and uh, old julius he had, he only had two wives i think uh, at not one? at the same time oh. but uh, <laughs> and the, the but i know and he he would uh, well, two things that I remember about Julius. Uh, my, we had uh, horses, uh, a team of horses uh, that, uh, and we fed them just too much mammoth clover, and that one horse got a real colic. Yeah, it it was there, and I don't know why my dad had J uh, Julius come over, and he and. Uh, they fed the horse eps and salts and stuff like that, and uh, the he said, "Well, that horse will be all right in the morning." Then uh, my dad called him up the next morning. The horse was dead, of course, and <laughs> and <laughs> needed help dragging him out. <laughs> and he said, "Oh yeah, you missed it. That. That's a Norwegian." Oh sure, I knew that. <laughs> he also said after that second. Uh, got married the second time. If she dies, we'll get a third. <laughs> <laughs> well, this reminds me of a na neighbor out in the West End who during the Depression had a wife who got appendicitis. Took her to the doctor and it was something like $25 to operate on her. And oh, he says, I can't afford that. Oh, the doctor said, just sit down for a minute. Wrote down some figures. He's there. He said, "That's what it costs to bury her." So he had the operation, and then she outlived him by twenty-five years. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We sure read Rowland Middleston on Halloween night. I bet you got a lot there. And, uh, <laughs>
behind the creamery was an old copper tank of some kind and Sylvan mining and we threw it in and took it down there to beat on. Well, got done and we left and left the tank down there and he sold that for more than what the shivery cost. <laughs> <laughs> They, he always was frugal. I mean, he knew how to make a buck. He made money on that. <laughs> oh, very good. Um, you've not mentioned Gilbert's Motors yeah. as a business in San Francisco. That wasn't there when we were kids. It well, it was started... They, right they, after the Second World yeah, War. Yeah, right after the war. But I remember a parade in San Creek on the 4th of July and they paraded all the cars that they had sold and they were like 47s, yeah. 46s or 47s. I remember Steve, my brother, mm -hmm. rode with Uncle Ludwig because he had a new one. Well, that was, you know, Gilbert's, and, and still it's a very uh, going institution. My, uh, when Conrad, uh, started, Conrad, Conrad and Garfield uh, got going with that, uh, and it was right after the war, so you had to put your name yeah. in for it there. And uh, my dad had the Chevrolet, and uh, th they thought he was, wasn't serious uh, when he, he said, put my name in for New Plymouth. And uh, finally, they kept the cars keep on going, and everything. he said, isn't my name ever coming up there? And he said, oh. We didn't believe you, <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't pick it. Huh? <laughs> so we we didn't get it till the till the forty eight. Yeah. Uh, we got a, a new forty eight uh, Plymouth, uh, and uh, from them. Uh, but uh, and of course, it's it's fantastic. Now they have uh, most uh, such a large area of cars, oh. and they obviously so. You go drive down the interstate, you see oh. uh, Gilbert's Motors oh. every once in a while. Oh, yeah, all we were the driving place. in California, and the car ahead of us had a Gilbert sticker on it. <laughs> <laughs> that started, didn't that start in 64 in there, kind of? No, that was Arnold that was over there. That, that was different, though. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were going to be at the Tucker deal. Tucker, yeah. Oh, uh, right. uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, this, this was a... Uh, f fantastic uh, car that was going to be sold. I don't know if we ever, any of them ever came, came to Sand Creek or not. I think Philip Amble invested in it, or I'd yeah. heard that he had. Yeah, yeah. yeah they uh, they uh, were going to be a Tucker dealer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, there's been a lot of car companies started over the years. Oh. Oh. Yeah, well, <laughs> still, Tesla. Still. None of you have a Tesla, do you? <laughs> Should have one in your garage. Kaiser and Fraser and oh, Kaiser and Fraser, yeah, yeah. they were uh, yeah, they uh, around. For a while. I remember there used to be uh, uh, a uh, cattle buyer uh, from New Jersey that uh, would come by and uh, Greenberg uh, oh, nice. uh, and. Uh, uh, Yes, he was, <laughs> and uh, the uh, uh, with and uh, uh, he had a uh, Fraser, and uh, the cows were out in the pasture, and and so uh, uh, we uh, rode in that Fraser out there, and uh, uh, got so we got to ride in Fraser. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing too, we had this old Chevrolet, mm -hmm. and it How was. Old? Oh goodness! It was 1930, I think. My dad had bought it new, but uh, and uh, the uh, had a long time, and so the point was to paint it, uh, repaint it, and uh, it was green with black fenders and stuff. It was kind of nice looking car. Uh, the uh, but I don't know if my dad got this green paint on sale or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, they painted the car and went down there. And uh, somebody at home oil said, Harold, you better not leave that out in the pasture. The car is so great. It looks like a rat. Speaking of cars, Norris Swanson got himself a Plymouth somewhere in the late 40s or early 50s. And 
He said, pretty nice car, except for one thing. He says, a kid walking by at, on the 4th of July with an ice cream cone and it wouldn't start. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was heard that was Delbert Souls. Oh, they was. told that, said two little girls come and sat in the fender with an ice cream cone and it wouldn't start. <laughs> Delbert, I haven't heard that name for a long time. Long time. Um, you've mentioned 4th of July a couple of times. What were 4th of July celebrations like? We all well, tried our best to blow our fingers off. Yeah. <laughs> we would go on a picnic, and I have a picture in the bedroom here of us and my grandmother, and my mother has a big apron on, a big one. <laughs> and she's dealing with food, and we had a flag set up there, and my grandma was sitting there with a big coat and a hat. <laughs> and there, but it was exciting. And my, oh, my dad is leaning against a tree as to get a backrest, but it's, it's a favorite picture of, that I have of uh, 4th of July, and so I don't know where it was, but A lot it was of mine. patriotism during the war and mm -hmm. afterwards, yeah. Yeah. and the 4th of July was a very, important celebration. Arnold often spoke at that. Okay, yeah, he did. That's when the Andersons all went home. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 your dad and Arnold ran against each other in a couple more, of elections. More than once. Yes, it's, that's true. Switch positions every so often. The, uh, Which position? Town chairman yeah. became County board member. Board member, yes. So, uh, well, I hope you didn't aren't willing to offend it when I said that Arnold should have been in the oh, legislature. Oh yes, I chopped that up on my offended side of the ah. ledger. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Do you talk about the war? I mean, what you were, you were well, all pretty we were old. born in '36, right. so we weren't very old when the right. war came. But I can remember. Huge flights of airplanes going over when they are having practice yeah. runs. Yeah. Blackout, blackout practices. So mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I, first grade, I remember that. Yeah, and remember. rationing. You couldn't mm -hmm. buy anything. Yeah. Uh, and then we would trade rationing. Yeah. Trade some stamps. stamps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and they had the, those, uh, well, those, you put a dime in each slot, I think, and then when you turn them in, you get a war bond out of Oh, them. yes. Oh, that, that, that was a project so in, in grade class. school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. Took a few dimes though, yeah. to get a $25 one. Gasoline, you know, rations and mm -hmm. tires. Mm -hmm. Speed limit was 35 miles an hour, yeah. that nationwide. Yeah. Would farmers get a bigger ration? Yes. Yeah. It, it, I don't know how it was calculated, but... Uh, if the, you had a tractor, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, so that you could get... Uh, Some of those older tractors burned power fuel. I think that was just kerosene. That was a misnomer. You didn't yeah. get much power yeah, out of that power fuel. <laughs> <laughs> smoke. <laughs> a lot of smoke. Yeah. Remember that, remember that oil pull that yeah, Arnold Yeah. Yeah. I don't... i never seen that run, but I've seen Rumley's run. In okay, the, well... It was interesting watching Odin and Arnold get it started on yeah. a cool morning. It took some time. There, they had a flywheel about four feet across, yeah. and a lever on that, that uh, <laughs> and they'd bring it up again, uh, and uh, go on until it would start popping. And uh, yeah, I watched them saw lumber with those old Rumleys. Mm -hmm. They don't run very fast, but the flywheel's so big. That did you know anybody in the war? What kind of memories do you remember of people not coming back? Yeah. Well, I remember when my uncle was uh, killed, uh, and uh, and the uh, he was in the North African campaign, and and he was shot in North Africa, and and I believe lived lived till uh, to. Uh, Italy, uh, and uh, but died uh, from the. Uh, and your uncle was who? Uh, Arnold Melgard. Juno Johnson had a son that died in the Second World War, yeah, and that was, was in North Africa. Wasn't he, uh, he driving the general around or something? Tipped it over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Court, Alfred Madison, he disappeared up oh, in right. and Mount there. McKinley. He, he yeah. flew in. That's still up. I yeah. think he's still up there. And I never found Lester it. Berg died in the Battle of the Bulge. Mm -hmm. mm. What? Of course, a, a different kind of thing. I remember uh, when uh, um, Joe Waterhouse shot oh. Lester. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Rands. 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 Yeah. And, shot himself. You know, that was the very first time that I'd ever uh, uh, been to a funeral of a person that had been murdered. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I think Harold and Bill called him. Is that right? I think uh, his wife called him. Uh huh. And well, he Snort had a whole list of people. You know. Snort Gilbert was on the list, and he stayed in his basement for three days until they found the body. <laughs> yeah, and Norman. Oh, wow. Well, Lester Rands, he was out in the field yeah. disking or something, and yeah. he, you know, and he started shooting at him. He ran, but he couldn't get away. What did you do? Where did you? Where did life take you? Took me right behind the barn there. <laughs> started shoveling. <laughs> <laughs> Bought my uncle's share of the farm. And my dad handed me a pitchfork, and that summed up my life for the next few years. Well, after high school, and I really didn't know what I was going to do uh, on, uh, uh, after graduating from high school. And at commencement, uh, Gordon Stone uh, from River Falls was uh, the speaker, and uh, he mentioned, well, there's a legislative scholarship uh, for the student uh, that had good grades uh, at, to, at River Falls. So I, after I went home, I wrote a letter applying for it and, uh, and uh, got it and went off to River Falls, uh, with then Wisconsin State College, River Falls. And uh, it was just a marvelous uh, opportunity for me. I opened up the world and uh, uh, you don't want me to go on long and long about that. read your book. Yeah, uh, the uh, the but uh, but uh, met uh, interesting uh, people who inspired me. Uh, I was I had a thought when I was graduating from college. Uh, I had an offer to teach uh, at Frederick, Wisconsin, and but the two. Walker Wyman and uh, Chuck Graham, two of my professors, uh, said, well, why don't you just uh, uh, write off to uh, graduate school and uh, see what happened? And the next thing I knew, I had uh, the uh, Garner Fellowship at the University of Illinois to uh, study political science. And I got a master's the next year, at the end of that year. and. And then coursework uh, for the doctorate the second year. And uh, I had a class uh, that we needed to, uh, the assignment was a research design. And it happened to be home with, at Sand Creek uh, at, on the farm and uh, talking to my uh, dad about Norwegian politics. And so uh, I decided to write up a uh, research design on the Norwegian political system. And Professor Moneypenny at, uh, at the University of Illinois said, well, you know, that's pretty good to think. Have you ever thought of doing that research? Well, no, I hadn't done that. Uh, and uh, uh, so I sent it off to the Fulbright people. Next thing, I was it was, uh, well, it didn't happen right away. Uh, I know I was down in the, uh, uh, I think I was raking hay on the, on the farm. And my dad came down and said, well, you got a telegram from the State Department. And uh, at, at that I would offer a Fulbright uh, scholarship to the University of Oslo. And, and uh, then uh, 
it, it signal if I'm going on too long. And uh, one thing uh, that I had, the only thing I had left uh, was the uh, lang uh, language. I got past the German exam, uh, but, uh, and then I thought because I was going to do the research in Norwegian that the University of Illinois should approve uh, a substitute of Norwegian for French. They said no. And, and I had a dick, dickens of a time with uh, that French. And the, uh, but I took, I took it and I did get by, but that was, and get, get passed. Then, and had to have that done before I could take the prelims for the doctor. And uh, so on Friday of uh, the, uh, the time that, uh, uh, that I found out that uh, I passed the French exam, they scheduled my uh, prelim def defense uh, on Monday, uh, the following Monday, and I passed that. And then by later that week, I needed to go to New York and sail to Norway because in those days we didn't. Uh, and. Uh, so I, I headed off and I'd never uh, been on a train. I'd never been on a train. And uh, I, I got on this, this train and, I, and it worked all right. I got to New York. I still don't know how I got that, that trunk from the uh, uh, train depot in, in New York. I've forgotten how, how that worked, but I, I guess I got uh, the cab driver to do that, and I, and then we got on the Stavanger Fjord and sailed uh, uh, to uh, Norway. And as some of you have, that have seen the uh, uh, thing downstairs here uh, that uh, Chancellor Thibodeau from River Falls had for my uh, retirement. Uh, He's, it's a th thing with a couple of veterinary pill, pills from the veterinary school, and it says Norwegian seasickness uh, 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 remedy. That was because when I got on there, this la Norwegian la at Stavanger Fjord, this lady gave me this great big pill, and she said, this is for seasickness. I said, oh my God, if I swallow that, I would die. Oh, no, you don't swallow it. You stick it up your rectum. Oh. <laughs> and then you wish you died. <laughs> and, uh, and we we sailed off to to Norway. But you see, all of this was so so, so compressed that we uh, we got to there. Well, we we also did see an iceberg on the way, <laughs> which was exciting. And uh, then then I needed to be at the uh, University of Oslo on September the first. Well, the problem was that the ship wasn't going to get there till the second <laughs> to Oslo. So they arranged that, that in the middle of the night, when they had a, a short stop at Christian Sun, that I, I could get off. And the, they rushed. Got a train then? Or? It got an overnight train to, to Oslo. And of course, you know, I, I didn't know anything about traveling and, and, and so on, but they were very helpful. They ushered me through. And the only time this has ever been happened, that they, in all of this getting me there, somebody said, is he a movie star? <laughs> <laughs> and Did you wave? <laughs> uh, but I, I got, uh, we got on, and in the quickness of, of, uh, of uh, doing this, I hadn't legally entered the country. So to, to of course they were pretty lax about that, but the, uh, two weeks later then I had, had, had to show up uh, at the police station in Oslo and I, uh, I don't know why I didn't do that. Or, uh, 
And then they just stamped it in that. That was, <laughs> and was and then I was legal. So it was a it was an exciting year. It was a year that I more than once thought of what in the heck did I get myself into? I mean, here I was going to do research in a language I had never studied, and and uh, and so on. And uh, um, but uh, it uh, it turned out in the end. And I wrote about the Norwegian Agrarian Party, a case study of a single interest party. And of course and, you had aunts and uncles. Well, and of course, yeah, it was, it was very nice in terms of family. At that time, uh, my uh, uh, two aunts and one uncle were alive, my dad's uh, brother and uh, sisters, and uh, they had uh, some very interesting uh, uh, well, cousins that I have there and uh, that I've really enjoyed over the years. Gone way too long. You didn't do a study on the National Socialist Party in Norway then? No. Mm. We didn't he, he like didn't, them. He, he didn't end up too well either. No. They hung him. <laughs> So, where did you end up? Oh, well, yeah, there, is, I, there is really an end. Uh, that uh, I came back to uh, the University of Illinois to do the writing up of the research. All the time, scared that the that I wouldn't have the information, and it's not a question of going back to the library <laughs> when you're across the the uh, so. And then I was through, uh, one thing my advisor at uh, the University of Illinois became, uh, got a sabbatical a Fulbright uh, to London. That, that uh, made me concerned and that I'd be working with a different person. It turned out. But the University of Illinois happened to hire Henry Vollen, which, who was the political scientist that I had worked with in Oslo. And so I've been very lucky, very, very, very lucky. The and, perfectly. Uh, Put a little and effort then, into it. And, and so why did you end up back in this area? Whitewater. Oh, oh, yeah. And then you came to Whitewater. Well, Sand Creek is a very special place, and uh, and uh, and so on. And as a farm boy, uh, you know, you've got to have some dirt, and. Uh, we were in in Shatak visiting Hannah's mother at the uh, nursing home there, and I read an ad for some land, and uh, uh, so I said, Hannah, we got to go out and look at there. The uh, uh, that, and I walked to, there, and it was it had been a very rainy day, and the corn was there, and so I was so. Wet, we had to go back to Shatak, and then I bought pants. <laughs> and <laughs> change, but we bought those 200 acres over there, and uh, then, uh, but not the buildings, the 20 acres for the building. And then we, you bought this later, then we bought this later. We first were uh, go, uh, you know, she had a sign out, Gert did, and uh, it's yeah, it's she had these signs, beware of occupant and things like that. <laughs> and, and so we were a little scared. <laughs> we were scared of her. And but she turned out to be a, a lovely oh, lady. Lovely. And uh, the uh, when the real estate person got uh, the listing, then we figured that'd be safe to go over there. <laughs> because we, and, and Hannah said, well, this would be a nice house to re redo, uh, and uh, so we bought it, and uh, that uh, the rest is history. Well, I uh, Brock, I graduated from Breckenridge High School in San Antonio, and then I went to uh, we traveled. We went to the West Coast, my parents and I, and came back and bought this house in Eau Claire, and then I went to UW Eau Claire. It wasn't any, uh, you know, now students do all this research on different institutions. 
And I just, well, oh, I'll go to Eau Claire. And I went there and majored in education, had a very good education, and uh, was very satisfied and worked, of course. I had a soft ice cream job, and I worked on campus in, the, in, um, in uh, one office and the library and such. As, um, and then, of course, I, say, I was able to get free room and board by living at home, so that helped a great deal. But, you know, I had to pay back tuition, any kind of expenses that I had, I repaid. And then uh, I went to teach in Wausau, Wisconsin. That was my first job. And I taught kindergarten there for four years and then moved on to Edina, Minnesota and taught kindergarten there. And then someone came calling and I married Galen Greenhill, of all things. Galen came into my life. He was this, I remember, as a skinny little boy wearing overalls, bib overalls. But uh, he had this education, and that was very important, that I marry someone with an education. And um, then I went to Whitewater, and I taught first grade there for 30 years, and involved in the university. It was a, wonder, it was a wonderful life, and the university is a very important part of our life, and uh, we still feel very strongly connected to UW-Whitewater. And of course, then getting this vacation place at the farm, Glen Hogue. We are very happy to be back in Sand Creek for uh, the summertime, and well, year round, year round. But I graduated from Colfax with Galen in 1954, and I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> I've done all kinds of things. Um, when I first got out, um, I drove milk truck for Minor Dahl for something over three years. Um, in in hauling into Falls Dairy in Sand Creek. Then I went to Eau Claire and got a job at Dolly Madison Dairies delivering milk door to door in the third ward. Oh. And, uh, well, that, there's no more Dolly Madison Dairies. That's all gone. So, Kurt Hogestoon called me and needed a milk truck driver. So I come back to Sand Creek. This was Cairns. No. What? This was Cairns. Yeah, my, the, almost the whole route was north of Highway 8. I had a little bit that he'd kept off another route north of Chittack there, but I went just about into Cumberland and around Rice Lake. And, uh, and it was delivered. That was haul, hauling cans into Sand Creek. So all going to Falls Dairy. Falls Dairy went through the flood in 1965, when you know you'd get one farm and the next farm would be a creek and the bridge was gone. And uh, I decided it was time to do something else. <laughs> and I went to work for the co-op in Sand Creek. And I was there for 20-some years, I guess. You know, it, was, it got, gradually got bigger and bigger. I did the fertilizer and the spray-in and all that kind of stuff. Jewel would come in drenched with the chemicals, <laughs> soaking wet all the way to his skin, and he's still alive and kicking. <laughs> and Ed said he'll never die, so well preserved. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, you know, my wife got cancer and died, and I didn't, you know, but... Um, <clears throat> you did get married. When did you get married? I got married in 1959. <clears throat> um, I had heard about these Anderson twins, and uh, my cousin, Lehman Larson, was going with his, with his sister, Jeanette. And uh, so he wanted us to go along. Well, Janice wasn't very interested, but she wanted to see the movie. So <laughs> we, went to, we went to the movie, and uh, I don't think I talked to her again for a couple months at least, and then we went out at Christmas time to a Christmas party for the company, and, and after that we started going steady, and we got married the following December, December 12th. And the reason for getting married in December was I was a low man on the totem pole, and so you got your vacation 
when you know, fit in. So that's when I got married. <clears throat> Grace Lutheran yeah. and Eau Claire. Yep, right. that's right. And I knew those Anderson twins because they lived down the street from my yeah. parents on Chippewa Street. Because yeah. they, they yeah. were in beauty, weren't they in beauty school? Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were okay. both okay. beauticians. <clears throat> and uh, Jeanette is still alive today. We were just up to see her right before Mother's Day. She's in a nursing home up in in uh, Princeton, Minnesota. <clears throat> Um, one of the things that I have enjoyed uh, because of my daughter Melanie <coughs> is uh, working with handicapped people, you know, in the, not necessarily directly working with them, but I've been involved in, in uh, well, they used to call it the Association for Retarded Citizens, and they don't call it, it's just the ARC, but I've been on state committees and a lot of things like that, but I've also been on a lot of committees with the county, and uh, I hope I've done some good. And <clears throat> now I have a second wife, who's also Norwegian. <laughs> and uh, because she had a house in Eau Claire and I had one up here and she didn't wanna, she didn't wanna live up here. And so if one of us gonna be miserable, I guess it's me, so. <laughs> <laughs> You want to say that louder, Julie? <laughs> <laughs> she oh, she's heard it before. <laughs> so we live in Eau Claire now. We both sold our houses and bought a different one. You moved halfway between, too, didn't you? <clears throat> halfway between the houses, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Not quite, but we're about six miles from where her other house was. We're on the north side of Eau Claire now. When did you, uh, uh, and the singing, take up the uh, oh, barber shopping? I've been doing that for about 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, not last Sunday. The Sunday before we sang in Eau Claire, we sang in seven churches and the Northwest Synod Convention. Oh. Wow. So that was a full day. Yes. you repeat yourself? What? You sing the same songs then? We or? sing the same songs, three songs, and then we leave so we don't hear the sermons and we don't get the collection plate. <laughs> That's an ideal arrangement, right? <laughs> what group are you with? It's the Dunn County Northern Lights Chorus. And it's a large group? Or? There's about 20 of us. Okay. Sometimes barber shop can be just the four. Well, the quartets, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do that too. Okay. Harlan, hmm? in addition to grabbing that pitchfork, what else have you done? Not much. <laughs> How about so, University of Wisconsin, Madison? I remember you going. Yeah, but short course. Mm -hmm. Just because I got all A's, don't mean that it was a career, you know. No, but it helped with farming, right? I would hope so. And you're an avid reader. Yeah. I have read a few books. Yes. yes. He also served on the board of the San Creek Farmers Union and the Ridgeland Co-op, town chairman. And Church president. Yeah. Church president, treasurer forever. Yeah. Arlen will not toot his own horn. <laughs> Kind of sounds self serving, don't yeah. it? <laughs> it's not very Norwegian. <laughs> right. But uh, the Honorable Harlan Anderson. Well, you leave that to my youngest sister. She got to be mayor of Pueblo, Colorado. So that's a politician in the family. Carol now is dabbling in it, too. Yeah. That's getting bigger. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. What sort of what sort of things would you would you say Sand Creek represents? Center of the universe. That's a nice answer. <laughs> Can you yeah. say that again? But, <laughs> but say to me, Sand the Creek center. represents the center of the earth and tell us why. Sand Creek represents the center of the universe. So why not? And it is because that's where our origins are. Mm -hmm. Our solid foundation started from the uh, things we were speaking of earlier. The 
guess. People of integrity, I think. Jewel, tell me again. People of integrity. Sancrit represents? Okay. People of integrity. Can you say Sancrit for me, Sancrit? Sancrit, to me, represents people of integrity. I would I would agree with that that Sand Creek does represent uh, integrity as you say, Jewel, and 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 center of the universe <laughs> as as Sarlin says. It's a very very nice place, uh, and uh, while you don't always agree with everybody, uh, it uh, is. Uh, it's fun, fun to be here. That's that's why we enjoy uh, coming uh, here to Grönhaug and uh, and uh, getting down and really learning what happens uh, on Saturday morning at the cafe when we see see the Andersons and the they as we tell Carl they have their own table uh, that uh, and it's a special status it's and then the royalty section yeah <laughs> and uh, and the Nelsons are there and uh, we can we learn all kinds of things uh, uh, it's not only about farming but uh, uh, about all, uh, all that's happening so that's 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 an exciting place uh, wouldn't want to be uh, at a place like uh, one of my. No, I'll drop it. Uh, <laughs> no, and and of course Han Hannah had uh, cousins. They're most of them are dead now. But the uh, uh, that uh, that uh, two uh, there, uh, and I have a sister not that far away at Colfax. Been fun. It's a fun place to be. Really nice. We leave it you to summarize right now, whatever you want to throw in. Is there any person, place, or thing that's connected with Sand Creek that you just like to tell? Any idol, anybody looked up to growing up? Well, so, uh, in terms of people that uh, that would fit into that category of looking up to uh, and that you enjoyed uh, talking with, I mentioned earlier that Juno Johnson was uh, one that uh, very much enjoyed uh, visiting with uh, the uh, Anna and Arnold Gilberts. Uh, uh, Joe Scott too uh, uh, was uh, <laughs> it was interesting, yeah. especially on the coldest uh, uh, night of the uh, winter. Joe would uh, walk down from his place to uh, to our place, and then he he wanted to get some milk and some eggs and and and, and uh, so on, and. Uh, but he, he too was a, a very a very uh, interesting person uh, in that. And of course, Julian Hansen was was one of the best storytellers uh, uh, around, and, and uh, so you could listen to him uh, uh, and uh, enjoy it uh, all the time. Uh, of course, Gerald Harrington would come to our house and. Uh, very often uh, during the winter and have coffee and and my mother and father would sit around and talk mostly farming that they talked about. But, he didn't uh, like daylight saving time. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But he often times came to our house at, in the winter on the nights. And he, he, Go and visit Eddie Peter, Eddie and Cora <laughs> oh, Peterson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that was interesting. Oh, yeah. And, and the biggest bowls of ice cream, cream that you could ever right. have, uh, and uh, there are a lot of people. Yeah, it, of it's people. it's people. And I remember yeah. Herman. Remember him? Yes. You know, and he would Herman the German. And he'd be out there hoeing potatoes, and once in a while he'd nip one off, and and him and Cora would be out there arguing, and have the hoe up in the air. <laughs> uh, yeah, and of course. Stanley had his accident 
Stanley yeah. Peterson. Yeah. Stanley Peterson. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stanley, Stanley Peterson. Peterson. I remember one time, and at that time we still still uh, mowed hay with uh, with the horses. We thought before we had uh, uh, power takeoff. Well, we had the power takeoff, but we didn't have the uh, power uh, mower. And it was mowing just alongside the road, and it was Stanley had just gotten his driver's license, oh. and then he went by with that Model A and blew the horn while the horses <laughs> got went nuts and they broke the pole. <laughs> and <then> we <laughs> so talking about blowing the horn, I remember Lena Larson used to come into our yard, and she had an old car. You probably remember what it was. Remember what it was? Yeah. And she would lay on that horn, and then we knew we, she never came in the hospital, so we would go out to the car, and she would be checking, she'd bring vegetables over. And my mother would start a garden, but it didn't really take off like it should. So Lena would come with that, or she'd bring flowers over to us too. And, uh, but she lived as a uh, housekeeper for Fritz Nelson, a Dane. And, uh, she was, uh, she was a very good cook and a very big gardener. She was a very special lady. She and my mother were very, very close friends. What kind of cake was it that... Uh, oh, yeah. uh, that uh, checkerboard cake. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and she the, would make checkerboard cake for Fritz's birthday. So this was always the joke with Uncle Arnold and my dad is saying, well, but we didn't get any checkerboard cake. <laughs> Lena would make checkerboard cake for Fritz. My mother and Auntie Eppie didn't make checkerboard cake. But they weren't going to either. <laughs> no. And of course, those guys, they, uh, uh, they you know, lived apart a lot of the early days of their, yeah, they, uh, their marriages. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they had to commute. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Uncle Arnold was on the farm. And, well, Uncle Fritz did Fritchard. that too. Yeah. He did that too because his first wife, oh well, yeah, his first wife was Cora, uh -huh. who lived in in Colfax, and Aunt Effie stayed in Colfax too. Now they, yeah, Carl calls it a commuter, commuter marriage. Harlan, you probably heard the story that about Stanley Gilberts and, and uh, Ansel Loftus when they cooned some of Albert Severson's watermelons. Mm -hmm. Heard several stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, they went, you know, walked through the woods back out, you know, so they'd come Did find some sandbars north of the north of the Loftus mm -hmm. farm there, and then they got by the fence, and then they sat down, we're going to eat them. Well, Albert followed them with a pitchfork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, now you boys, he said, you took them. He said, now I got to eat them. So he stood over them with a pitchfork. <laughs> 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 Another story when Stanley Peterson and the crew were cooning watermelons from Morris and Clarence. And Morris and Clarence lived for this. And they were chasing them down the road, only Stanley didn't have time to turn around, so he was going backwards down the road and he passed everybody. <laughs> no, that was that was uh, 35 and, and Kenny passed him. In reverse. In reverse. <laughs> I was riding, well, Roger and I were riding with Kenny one night, and he had that little Ford coupe. And we come up out of Boomer where the S curve used to be and got over the bridge down there. And he says, See them two little red dots up there? We're going to catch them. Oh, I was scared. <laughs> and then we get over by White Birch, and he turns and to go up the hill there, and he had it just the right speed, so we go over the bridge, we airborne. And, <laughs> Your stomach leave you? <laughs> Weightlessness ride. is kind of fun. <laughs> Didn't care to ride with him. Well, gig, are we out of tape? Not yet. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more questions? I don't think so. But I, I'd like to do one thing if okay. I can. I just, sorry, talking loud because I hear myself. If I can just get a close up on each of you, have you speak directly to camera. And um, so, like in Harlan's case, you just say, "Hi, my name is Harlan Anderson. I I was I've been I was born, raised, and continue to live in Sand Creek for 
X number of years. Um, in your case, hi, my name is, then, you know, I was born, raised um, in Sand Creek, and I came back after X number of years. Whatever your individual connection, connection is, um, however long you've lived here, if you've been here your whole life, um, but just a simple sentence, your name and, and your connection to Sand Creek. Does that make sense? No, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm All right, well, I'll start with Carlton, about, if that's okay, and would you mind just getting the mic so it's... You want how long, long we've been here? It, yeah, been approximately here. how long you... So you you were born and raised... Uh-huh, and left here in, in 52. And, and, yeah, but you did, um, and just... Um, and, and you could, in your case, back. you could say, and we, we came back... With a vacation home. Yeah, okay. yeah. Vacation home was... Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It's, it, the thing is that you had family. You had the, the years that you were living here, and, but you still come back and visit. Yeah. Okay, Harlan, whenever you're ready, and you'll look right to camera. Harlan Anderson. I was born on the farm in Sand Creek. I have lived there for 77 years. And if ambulance don't come soon enough, I'll probably die here. So. Thank you, Harlan. <laughs> All right, one moment. Just going to double check my focus. All set. Okay. Galen Greenhill, uh, we uh, moved up to Sand Creek from uh, down by Colfax, Big Elk Creek. Uh, uh, and uh, when I was six years old, or going to be six years old, so at the time of first grade and uh, uh, spent the years through high school here but came back uh, all the time from uh, for uh, summers or uh, in other times and uh, very much like the idea of uh, reconnecting uh, and find out all the things that are happening in this wonderful part of the world. That's wonderful. I'm going to ask you to do it again and shorten it up. <laughs> and I'd like you. Yeah, that, uh, this would be no, interesting. No, 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 it's great. It's great, and, uh, and it's only because if I cut it in such a way that when I before we start with everybody, it's just like a brief introduction. Hi, my name is. Yes. And then I was. You were born here, right? No. no. Or, excuse no, no. me. I, um, you moved, Went to school say, here. Um, I, I moved here. I moved to Sand Creek when I was six years old, and you graduated. From here. From Colfax. From, yeah. Okay, from the area. Um, and I left for several decades. Is that accurate? Yes, uh, it, it means the, the, the difference is the, the definition of left. Right. Okay. <laughs> I I've always had family here. Yes. I've always had family here. Yeah, that's good. And enough. my wife and I have come back to stay. Well, no, the or no. To visit. To come back, come back um, for vacation home. Vacation home. Okay. Yeah, because they live in Whitewater. Right, right. And just uh, that's our home. Okay, come back. Sure. To our vacation home. Yeah. Does that make sense? Sure. I'm going to say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. There's lots of tape. We can do it over and over. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Anytime you're ready. Okay. Uh, Galen Greenhill. I was born in Big Owl Creek uh, near Colfax. We came here when I was six years old in time to go to the first grade here after high school and, and went on to college and uh, and now in retirement we like to come to uh, our farmhouse. Okay, great. And one minute. Okay, anytime you're ready. I'm Hannah Hovland Greenhill, and I was born here at Sand Creek, and I I lived here till I was in, through high through I left here when I was in high school, but I have returned uh, now to our vacation home and enjoy Sand Creek again. Wonderful. And Jewel, and anytime you're ready. Jewel Smith and. We moved to the Sand Creek area in 1947 after my dad had died, and uh, I've lived most of my life here. I'm living in Eau Claire now. 